Hey, hey guys, happy Monday morning. Uh, coming to you live from my couch, which is conveniently directly under the heater. Hi, heater. <laughs> Uh, and I'm still in my puffer jacket. I am really, really cold this morning. Uh, I'm hoping it's because I'm not getting sick and it's just the middle of winter and it's damn freezing. But uh, so Michelin Man ESS coming at you. I hope you guys had a cracking weekend. Uh, mine was, oh, what did I do? I just, yeah, a combination of work. I actually probably worked a little bit more than I normally do, um, but Shit happens sometimes and you've got to roll with the punches. Uh, I went to the netball yesterday in Melbourne, which was super fun. And I caught up with some girlfriends last night. Uh, we are organizing a big fundraising event later in the year. Um, hi, Amy. Hey, Belinda. Hey, Belle. You're not normally on live. Hello, hello. Uh, this year is the 30 year anniversary of my dad passing away. 30 years crazy um so we're organizing a fundraising event for later in the year which is awesome and yeah so the weekend was really nice nothing outrageously um oh, i don't want to say outrageously super fun but i had a really nice combination of work and play hey marissa hi Kristen. thanks so much for saying hi guys it makes all the difference so this time last week um if you watched my live i cried on a facebook live which you know, does a lot for your brand. <laughs> and that's why today I wanted to talk to you about branding. But um, I have had, I had a really heavy week, if I'm really honest. And I set the tone for that myself last Monday morning with a really hectic, full on, deep and meaningful Facebook Live. Uh, and I'm really, really glad I did because I was a little bit apprehensive going into it. Um, and I'd been told by a few people to keep it light and it's Monday morning and don't freak people out. But I just had this conversation like sitting in me or on me or weighing me down that I had to have. And last week, um, while it was really confronting and um, a little bit overwhelming in a number of different instances, I had some of the most, honestly, like some of the most amazing conversations with a lot of you, with a heap of women about where they're at in life and how that volcano analogy is playing a role in where they're at and how they live their life every single day. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. Um, go back to last week's Facebook Live and have a listen. I talked a lot about um, volcanoes <laughs> of all random things, but um, when you just feel like you've got all that lava inside you and it's creeping up and it's creeping up and it's just about to explode and you're really apprehensive and overwhelmed and scared about what the ramifications are gonna be when your top blows or when all that lava comes, you know, that toxic, deadly lava comes spewing back out. And uh, I pr certainly provoked some thinking or some different thinking in some of you. Um, I got a, quite a few messages from people saying, I never realized that that's where I was at, but that's definitely where I'm at. I need to go and get some help or I need to go and speak to people about this or thank you for shining light on this because I didn't even realize it was a thing or that it was happening to me. I just couldn't explain how I felt. Um, I also had some really, really touching conversations and email discussions and all the rest of it um, and one particular phenomenal woman who sent me a video message back um, that I stupidly watched at midnight having spent some time with a friend and just oh, I'm just gonna quickly watch this at midnight and then I lay in bed awake all night thinking about it and all day thinking about it the next day um, but if nothing else it taught me that leaning in to the uncomfortable and having some of these big conversations is really, really important. Uh, and yep, I cried and that's not ideal and not what I wanted to portray to you guys. Not that I try and put on this fake face all the time, but um, I was really vulnerable and it was, it got a little bit out of hand. And, but if nothing else, you guys realize that I'm human as well and that we're all tackling the same sort of stuff and we're all in the same shoes and we're all trying to achieve the same things. So um, if nothing else, I hope it helped you guys realize that you're not alone in your journeys and that we're all in it together and all, you know, trying to achieve the same sort of stuff. I had a client ask me last week, because I always reference the lean into the uncomfortable 
And she said, I think I've lent in so far that I've actually fallen flat on my face on the other side. And there was definitely some of that for me in that live last week that I was like, right, I'm going to man up. I'm putting my big girl pants on. Man up. I hate that expression. Putting my big girl pants on. I'm going to lean into this. And I felt like I lent so far in that I went straight out the other side and fell flat on my face. But um, the response from you guys and the conversations I had because of the video that I put out um, made it all worthwhile. So I thought today, rather than continuing on the Deeper Meaningful Monday mornings, um, which might totally become a feature on the, on the content calendar at ESS HQ, that I would talk to you about branding. Uh, I worked in branding or corporate marketing or I was a brand manager or a marketing manager or whatever you want to call me for a bazillion years. I look good for my age, right? Being a bazillion years old. Hey, Cara. Um, hey, Christy. How are you? Um, so branding is kind of all the experiences that your customers or your potential customers have with your brand. Um, and strong branding is what will really drive your business forward. And if I think about my clients and I think about a lot of what I see on social media, um, the biggest opportunity that a lot of small businesses have is to improve their branding. So this morning, I just wanted to kind of whip you through my, hey, Erin, nice to see you. Um, I thought I'd whip you through my thinking around just some of the thought starters on what you can start to implement or start to consider when you're doing your marketing and you're doing your social media to try and strengthen your branding. So your branding, or if you've got great branding, you should instantly be telling your audience what you do. So what it is that you do, how you do it, um, what your approach to do it is. So you might have a different style or a different personality or a different product or different features and benefits. And ultimately what you wanna do with your branding is establish um, trust, credibility and awareness and i always reference the no like and trust model not my model like not revolutionary thinking but super simple thinking if you can get people to know you to like you and then to trust you you're often racing now the know you part is just simply awareness and that's getting your brand your business your personality your style your message your product whatever it might be out to as many people as many relevant people as possible and it's not as many people if you're there's no point getting your business out into it like i work with small businesses so there's no point getting my business out in front of the massive corporates who i never want to work with they never want to work with me what's the point so they've got to be relative relevant 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 eyeballs um, but getting people to know your business so um, ensuring that your business is positioned in the right bubbles or the right pockets so that people know that you exist then you need to get them to like you and this part's always really interesting and rewind three or four years ago i was probably a little bit obsessed with getting everybody to like my business and with experience and maturity and time uh, I've realized that I just want people to like or unlike my business which I know sounds a little bit weird but that's the opportunity and it's at that moment where people are either going to get on board the ESS train and know me and like me and know and like what I'm all about and my style and my personality and my vibe and my approach and my words and my message and all the rest of it or they're gonna unlike me and go and find someone else and that is equally as fantastic I know that sounds weird that I'm like, awesome, yay, people don't like me. And it does, it has taken me a long time to get my head around that. And I, if I'm really honest, I'm not a thousand percent comfortable with people not liking me because <laughs> it's just human nature, uh, but I'm working on it. And um, ultimately three, four years ago, when I was just trying to get everybody, every man and his dog to like me, I was getting a lot of inquiries into my business from people that I didn't want to work with or that I couldn't appropriately serve or that I didn't have the experience to work with or that couldn't afford me or whatever it might be because I was attracting the wrong people into my business because I didn't have the right branding. So now I rebranded and I'm really confident that you get a really good sense from my social media and from my marketing as to what I'm all about. So you instant, or instantly or soon thereafter know whether you like me or whether you don't like me. And if you don't like me, 
99.9% of the time, it's not like, oh my God, she's horrendous, I'm going somewhere else. It's just, that's not what I'm looking for, or I'm looking for somebody with a bit more of that, or I wanna work with somebody who's had experience with these people, or whatever it might be. And if that's not me, then that's fantastic. Go and find the person that it is. So no like, and then trust. So let's say you find out about me, you decide that you like me or that you like my message or my style or my aesthetic or my experience or my client list or whatever it might be. And then I have to get you to trust me. And that's obviously um, a big one. Uh, and you do that by positioning yourself as an expert and building your expertise and building your credibility in your niche. Um, you need to be really clear on what that niche is and what the pain points of your ideal customers or clients are so that you can position yourself as the one to answer those problems. So um, I'm a business coach, I'm a life coach, I'm a marketing I hate the word guru, but I know marketing um, and I help you solve your problems and I help you make decisions and I help you move forward. Um, if And I do it in a certain way. I've got a certain style about me. And if that's not for you, then that is awesome. Go and find the person that is for you. But I'm positioning, I'm consistently positioning myself as an expert in that field or that niche. I'm not trying to call myself um, a social media manager. I'm not trying to call myself a... Um, wholesale coach or a gift business coach or whatever it might be I'm I've chosen a niche and that's what I'm going after so I always in all of my marketing try and always come back to know like and trust so everyday interactions that people have with your brand they're judging you or they're forming opinions about whether you're the right or the wrong fit for their business or their lifestyle or that you have the right product that's going to suit them or whatever it might be. So everything that you do has an impact on how people perceive you and how people ultimately judge you. That was a really attractive face. <laughs> Elastigirl at her best. So all of your messaging, your social media, everything you have on your website, um, all of your word of mouth marketing, so what your clients and other people are saying about you, and fundamentally anything that you're putting out into the universe under your brand title is how people are gonna judge you or how people are gonna gauge whether you're the right or the wrong fit for their business. So all of those touch points need to be consistent. You need to consistently show up, and I'm gonna talk about consistency in a bit more detail. You need to consistently show up in each of those platforms or each of those touch points and have the same message so that people can trust you. If you're on your website saying one thing and you're on your social media saying another, it, I, I'm not sure who you are or what you stand for and, I, and I'm a bit confused and I'm not feeling confident and it's a bit harder to build that trust. Let's talk about consistency in a minute. The first thing I wanted to talk about is getting a thousand billion, trillion, zillion, gazillion, billion times clear on what makes you unique and different. What is your secret sauce, I guess you could call it? What are your 11 herbs and spices? Who doesn't love KFC? <laughs> um, and, and this is where I think so many businesses fall down. I don't know, I was gonna say particularly at the moment, I'm not sure if it's a, at the moment thing, but I'm seeing time and time again, businesses out there all saying the same stuff, all selling the same products, none of it differentiating themselves, and none of, no one is setting themselves apart from the rest of them, the rest of their competitive set. Everybody's saying the same thing, doing the same thing, selling the same thing, same, 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 same. And as a customer, I feel a little bit bored and I don't have affinity or have trust or even like many of those businesses because everybody's just pushing the same shit. So first things first, I want you to get super duper clear in what sets you apart. How are you better? How are you different? How are you more unique versus the next person or the next business? So if you wanna work with a business coach, it's, a, it's actually quite hard to choose who the right person is for you because there are 75 bazillion, gillion, million, gillion, gazillion, whatever. There's shitloads of them out there. So how do you choose the right one that is for you? First, you cut through all the crap and you find a handful that really resonate with you, the ones that you really like or the ones that really talk to you or the ones that have a strong brand, the ones that are consistently showing up and delivering a message that resonates with you. And all of that is anchored in what makes un 
of those businesses understanding what makes them unique and different. So if you have a think about um, my brand, for example, um, hopefully most of you would be aware of what makes me different in the business coaching land versus somebody else. So my style is a little bit different, my attitude, my graphics, my aesthetic, my big business experience is quite different to other people. Um, my clients set me apart from my competitors, so on and so forth. So I'm really, really clear on what makes me different, what makes me unique and what my special source is, what my strengths are. And I try and play to those strengths in my comms and all of my marketing that I put out to the market. There are a lot of people out there in certain pockets and certain niches all selling the same stuff, all saying the same thing, same, 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 same. And that is not inspiring, that's not exciting, that's not motivating, that doesn't want me to hand over my credit card details to you. So it's really important as business owners that you get a thousand percent clear on what makes you unique and different. All of that can be anchored in brand storytelling. So there might just be one part of your business that's different versus your competitive set. You might be selling exactly the same product, but the story that you tell that sits in and around that is different to your competitors. And the brand storytelling is what brings out the emotion and what brings out the kind of pulling on the heartstrings component of it. So what's going to set you apart from the 75,000 competitors that you have is going to be your brand storytelling. Now, if we think about, uh, pick a brand, any brand, if we think about Cadbury chocolate, for example, Cadbury chocolate, you know, it tastes good, I guess. I wouldn't say it's the best tasting chocolate out there. It's certainly readily available in every touch point, all the supermarkets. Let's say it's too readily available. It's always in my face. Um, but they're not out there harping on about how good their taste is, let's say. They're just a chocolate, fundamentally. But what they do anchor all of their business in is their brand storytelling about joy. And if you have a think about what Cadbury do well and why their marketing is, you know, as global best practice as it comes, They've got really consistent branding. Their look and feel is consistent at every single touch point. They've got the purple, they've got the glass and a half of dairy milk, they've got the little device with the pouring milk thing, the pail of milk or whatever that's called. All that builds trust, all that's building branding. And then on top of that, they're doing exceptionally good storytelling at the moment or consistently in the joy space. So they've got a box of chocolates and they talk about it, but they've called it the joy box. They strongly encouraging in their call to actions for um, their customers to find joy or click here for more joy or um, buy this chocolate, do this cool fun activity on social media and you'll find yourself in Joyville. Everything that they're doing is anchored in joy, which is an emotion, which is really strategically clever brand storytelling pulls on my heartstrings, that's what's setting them apart. They're not trying to play the chocolate, our chocolate tastes better than their chocolate, our chocolate has this chocolate, blah, 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 blah. They've anchored it, anchored it in an emotion which um, just accelerates that know, like, and trust. I trust that everything that Cadbury does is going to make me feel amazing. I eat it and I'm like, yes, this is the best thing ever. Joy, joy, joy. Every block I open, I am unwrapping joy. Brand storytelling is what's gonna set you apart and what is going to differentiate you versus your competitors. Hey Luce, I hope you're well. You're sitting at gymnastics, ballet, I can never remember, whatever it is. Nice to see you. Hi Hayley, 10% joy. Yeah, exactly right. So 10% more joy for bigger blocks. Everything Cabri are doing is anchored in joy, which is really, really good storytelling. And that storytelling is what sets them apart. There's nobody else out there who can steal the joy story because they own it. There's lots and lots of people out there who can steal the chocolate story, but but not in a way, not in a way or not in a style that's going to um, dislodge or take Cadbury off their pillar or off their pedestal, I guess. Um, Cadbury did a really successful campaign in the UK about joy o'clock, which is that 3 p.m. slump that we all feel when we're sitting at our desk, pop some joy in your mouth, joy o'clock, eat chocolate type mentality. It's really, really hard for any of their competitors to come in and steal those stories or steal their brand from them because it's such, that storytelling has such strong affinity with what they're trying to do. Versus if you look um, in Australia in the, you know, there's 
oh, you know, a thousand different businesses selling earrings out there. So why would I buy your earrings versus the next earrings versus the next earrings? What sets you apart and what's that storytelling that you can tell in and around your brand to do that job better? So number one is getting really stupidly clear on what your secret source is, what makes you unique and different. Number two is consistently delivering that story, consistently spreading the joy to every man and his dog. So consistently showing up, so regularly putting that message out there and regularly explaining to your customers what makes you unique and different and better than your competitive set. This can be done through your imagery, through all of your stories, through all of your storytelling, all of your branding, all of your messages, through your customer testimonials, so on and so forth. Um, consistently telling that story. What do you stand for? What do you stand against? All that consistency is going to be building trust. They know you, they like you, now it's the trust part and consistency breeds trust. It's not a very nice expression, but, um, if you are regularly reinforcing the same message, I start to believe it, I start to get on board, I start to feel good about it, boom, here's my credit card details, is fundamentally what we want people to do. <laughs> um, and that trust or that consistency is what's going to build your business. You don't want people sitting on the fence. You don't. There's so many businesses out there who one week are talking about one thing and the next week are talking about something almost contradictory to what they were talking about last week. So I as a customer or as part of the audience are sitting there kind of going, oh, I, th I thought you liked that and now you don't, but you do, but you don't. Oh, I'm confused. Are you, are we, I'm not. I'm confused, I don't understand, I don't have trust. You haven't built an affinity with me that makes me think that you know what you're talking about or that you can be trusted with my business or my credit card details. So consistency is key. Now, I know social media pretty well, um, and this is probably the number one thing that I harp on with my, with my clients about social media is consistently posting, regularly putting your storytelling, regularly putting your special source out into the big wide world. Super duper, duper important. Somebody, who was it? Oh, I can't remember now. Somebody on the weekend said super duper looper for extra emphasis, which I freaking love, so I'm stealing it. I will find out who it is so I can at least credit them as the brains behind super duper looper. So getting really clear on your, on your secret source and then consistently putting it out there. You want all those touch points that people find you at to be consistent. You want your website, your social media, all of your videos, your testimonials, your clients, all of that needs to be consistent. If I see you on Instagram stories and you're bright and you're bubbly and you're relaxed and you're having the time of your life and your business and you're this super cool chick. Um, and then I get to your website and you're Miss Serious and you're freaking out and you're very stern and very wordy and you've lost that energy and that motivation and that excitement. I don't trust you because I'm like, over there she's super fun and here she's super serious. I'm confused. Again, I'm not sure where you sit on that. Yes, it was you, Christy. I'm like, I know there was some rock star who was super duper looper. Christy Tal, Fox and Ramona, from this day forth, I will credit you every single time I say super duper looper, which is a super cool expression. <laughs> ESS is gonna be all about the super dupers from moving forward, but I promise. I will credit you super duper looper girl. Hey Tina, nice to see you. Um, so consistency, consistency builds trust. We all want trusted customers. We want people to know that we're awesome and that they can rely on us for all that sort of stuff. So no like trust, consistency builds trust. Number three is building distinctive brand assets. So like the example I just spoke through around Cabri, they have built those distinctive assets. They've consistently shown up and built Joyville, Joy O'Clock, the Joy Box, Unwrap Joy, Bigger Blocks for More Joy, 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 Joy. I just challenge anybody to say that 10 times fast. So building those distinctive brand assets can help you build that affinity and that familial, I can never say this word, familiar, familiarity. <laughs> I'll say it really fast so you can't realize if I'm saying it wrong. Help you be familiar with them. Familiar, why is that so hard? Familiarity. Anyway, laugh at me, go for it. 
<laughs> so um, your distinctive brand assets are what are going to set you apart from your competitors, what is going to make you memorable and different and unique, and what is going to keep you familiar or top of mind. And if you can remain top of mind, when they next go to purchase a gift or they next go to employ a copywriter or a business coach or buy a pot plant or whatever it might be, you are the thing or the one or the business that's going to spring to mind and boom, they'll be on board your train handing over their credit card details. So your distinctive brand assets or your DBAs as we call them in the corporate world uh, is what's going to build affinity with your brand. It makes you really consistent and it easily and um, more often than not visually sets you apart from your competitors. So if you have a think about Coca-Cola, they always use the red and they always use the cursive font. Boom, job done. We've talked a lot about Cadbury today, the purple, the joy, the glass and a half, so on and so forth. They're all distinctive brand assets. If I said to you, tell me about Cadbury, 99.9% .9 of you are likely to go glass and a half, marvelous creations, um, you know, purple, joyville, joy o'clock, all that sort of stuff. If we think about um, Slogans can also be distinctive brand assets or taglines or strap lines, whatever you want to call them. Um, I worked at L'Oreal for a really good, really good time. It was a good time some of the time, but a very long time. Uh, and L'Oreal, because you're worth it, was our tagline and we used it in every single touch point. And people, again, that recall, if someone said L'Oreal, they'd be like, because you're worth it. Same with Maybelline. Maybe she's born with it, maybe it's Maybelline. All of those things are distinctive brand assets that set people, set brands apart from other brands and help build that affinity and help build that connection and that emotional connection with your customers. They are instantly and easily associated with your brand and ultimately it makes your life easier, particularly on the likes of social media in today's day and age. If I'm scrolling through the explore feed on Instagram and there's 75,000 memes, as there tends to be, which one's gonna jump off the page? Which one am I gonna be able to associate back to the brand? The one that's got the strong branding or the strong tagline or the bright colors or whatever it might be that remind me, top of mind, remind me of what that brand is all about. Those distinctive brand assets can evolve over time and can change a little bit, but it's really, really important that once you're clear on what your secret source is or your um, uniqueness, that you start to have a think about how you're going to bring that to life and what some of those distinctive brand assets are. So I'm doing quite a bit of work on my own business in this space at the moment. I did a rebrand 12 months ago, um, which I'm, I love and has done great things in my biz. And now I'm starting to strengthen some of those distinctive brand assets even further so that when you see a you know, heart rate, pulse rate, you think of Emily. When you see the word boom, you think of ESS. When you see or when you hear Hey Hey Legends or something along those kind of lines, they're starting to become, or, they, or bananas, I can't forget about bananas, they're starting to become distinctive brand assets for me and people see, I get messages every single day from people seeing banana things and tagging me in, which I freaking love because A, it reaffirms that I'm doing a good job with my branding, B, I'm then having connections and conversations with these people and C, awesome. Like I'm building affinity, I'm building trust, I'm building recognition with some of those assets that they're becoming mine. Now, obviously I'm never going to own the banana and that's lots of people go, well, what's a banana got to do with business coaching? And if I'm really honest, it's got nothing to do with business coaching, but it's got something to do with me and being in a service industry, being a service provider, being all about like my business is about me, building that affinity and having that conversation or having those um, uh, connections with my audience is just invaluable as far as building my business is concerned. So anything I can do to open the door and let people in a little bit, whether that's boom, whether that's bananas, whether that's legends, whether that's you know my beautiful bright branding or whatever it might be, that's what's going to bring people in. That's how I'm going to connect. That's how I'm going to build the know, like, and trust with my customers. So having a think about what your distinctive brand assets might be and how you're going to consistently bring them out, bring them to life or bring them out in your social media and your messaging and all that sort of stuff. Hey Zoe, nice to see you. Number four, 
is making it all about your customers. So your branding, yep, it can be about your business and it can be about you, but it's really important that you have the customers and or your clients, whatever, whoever you're working with, at the heart of everything that you do. I don't wanna see you in social media talking about me, 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 me all the time, or we're so amazing because we do this, or we're so amazing because we do that, or whatever it might be. You've gotta make it about your customers or your clients. And to build that trust and that affinity with your potential clients or your potential customers, you want them to feel like you understand them. And I have a knack at being able to do this because I do ultimately understand my ideal clients. I, I, Every single week, I could almost, I reckon every single week for the last six months, I've had comments on these live videos of people saying, are you inside my head? How do you know how to read my thoughts like that? And I don't have special powers to read your thoughts. I don't have technology that gets inside your brain and enables me to like zap it out. That would be kind of cool if I did, but I don't. How I am able to connect with you, it's getting hot now. <laughs> sitting in my puffer jacket under the heater, how I'm able to connect with you and how I'm able to build trust with you is because I understand where you're at. A, 90% of the time I'm in the same shoes or I'm just ahead of where you are in your journey or whatever it might be. But the way I, and the, how I respond to those messages of like, oh my God, are you reading my thoughts? Is like, well, no, because I have the same thoughts as well and I understand where you're at. And that builds connection, that builds aff affinity, that builds trust, if you understand my thoughts, you're gonna be able to help me solve those problems, all those issues, all those concerns, all those challenges. Boom, I need to work with Emily and we're off and racing. So focusing on your clients or your customers or your potential customers is absolutely critical. I, I, I don't go out in, their, in my, blah, 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 can't speak. I don't go out in my marketing and tell you every single day how amazing I am. I don't remind you every single day, I've worked in big business for 15 years, I've worked on brands like L'Oreal and Kraft and Yoplait, work with me, because you're left kind of feeling like I'm preaching to you or I'm a bit desperate, to be honest. But because of all that big business experience and because now I've got amazing small business clients as well, I can talk to you in a language that relates and that connects and that shows you that I am in the same shoes that you're in or I have walked the path that you're currently walking, or I work with a lot of clients who do, and that builds trust, and that shows you that I understand where you're at, and I can help you save, solve your problems, I can help you make decisions to move forward, and that kind of, oh my God, she totally gets me, she totally understands where I'm at, she's gonna be the one that's gonna help me move forward, is why I get the opportunity to work with so many amazing customers, is because I understand where they're at, and I can consistently show them through my branding and my messaging that I get them. Like I have walked in your shoes. I am still walking in your shoes. Let's walk together type mentality. Now that's why word of mouth uh, is so important. That's why referrals. And even today we find brand ambassadors and influencers and all that sort of stuff so important is if I respect you and I look at you and I think, oh wow, she's buying those bed sheets. I want those bed sheets too boom, we've built trust, we're building affinity, you wanna, you know, you wanna um, tap into what they're enjoying or what they're seeing as well. So making it about your customers, making it about their pain points, their problems, you demonstrating that you can help them solve whatever it is that they're facing, they might need a new outfit for their upcoming event. They might need new earrings. They might need new clothes for their kids. They might need business coaching. They might need a new website. Whatever it might be, putting yourself in their shoes and speaking in their language and making it about them rather than about you is going to build no like and trust. No with a K, not with no with an N. <laughs> they're gonna know you, they're gonna like you, and they're gonna trust you because they, they believe and you've demonstrated to them that you understand where they're at. So number four is making it all about your customers. This is not about you going, buy the earrings, they're amazing, they're made out of 100% blah, blah, bye, 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 bye. It's about demonstrating that you understand where they're at, you understand their pain points and you can help them make decisions and move forward. I hope this is making sense. If it's not, use this little emoji, put your hand in the air and ask, because I'm really happy to talk about this in more detail or specifically to any of your businesses if you like. And then number five is about delivering value. So value doesn't have to mean being cheap. And I think that's where quite a few people get into a trap uh, and where the mindset piece comes into play as well around um, 
to be competitive, I have to be cheaper than everybody else or I have to be cost effective or I have to be on par with everybody else. And that's absolutely not the case. You can deliver value in a number of different ways through a number of different touch points in your business that don't even have to be price related. And let me talk you through that in a bit more detail. So um, my business, for example, if you want to work with a business coach, there are far cheaper options than working with me. Yep, there, I said it. <laughs> I am not the cheapest business coach going out there, going, not the cheapest, um, today, I'm not even one that can speak, so maybe don't employ me, but I'm not the cheapest business coach. Um, I can tell you who the kind of really budget entry level ones are, but I can also tell you that you get what you pay for. So I'm able to position myself in a pricing spectrum or scale at the higher end of the market because of the experience that I have, because of the value that I can bring to your business, so on and so forth. So I don't use dollars or value as my differentiating secret sauce or special, you know, unique point of difference. Ikea, for example, use the value equation in the price range really, really well. Yes, you can get cheaper furniture at probably Fantastic Furniture, but you know if you go to Ikea that you get amazing value. So they really, really harp on about um, cheapest or, you know, entry level, budget, great value, all about family value, blah, blah, blah. Same with the supermarkets. So massive years and years and years worth of price war, Coles versus Woolworths, everybody's talking about value. Cheapest price here, cheapest price here, down, down, prices are down. Everything's about cheap, 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 cheap. Come here for the cheapest prices. Family value, everyday low price, all that sort of stuff. They're playing the dollar equation for you. If you think about a brand like Apple, um, not by any stretch of the imagination the cheapest brand, but they bring value to their customers through their products. So they're innovative and their product leadership, they like to position themselves as um, early adopters of technology, early adopters of um, new and great things to the marketplace. So they're not the cheapest. Like if I actually don't know computers or technology well enough to know who the cheapest is, but they're not. <laughs> but they position that value equation based on product leadership or product innovation. You will get amazing value or a great um, experience because their products are cutting edge. Ikea, cheapest chips. If you think about um, Virgin Airlines, for example, a little bit debatable, but let's talk about it. Uh, they position the value equation. They add value to their customers by delivering exceptional customer service. I don't know, that's a little bit debatable at the best of times, but that's what their whole business promise is on around customer service. So their value equation, they deliver value through exceptional customer service. They always harp on about their planes leave on time, the check-in is as simple as possible, so on and so forth. Um, Virgin anchor themselves in great customer experience, great customer service. That's their value equation. And they're delivering value. They're not the cheapest airline either. There's a hundred budget other budget airlines that are cheaper, but you know if you want great customer service, which is really important to a lot of people at a time of travel, which is stressful and there's lots of you know annoying things going on when you're traveling. It's tiring, you've got bags, you've got kids, you've got excess baggage, you've got big things, prams, blah, 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 blah. You, you, a lot of people opt in to exceptionally good customer service uh, and hence they go to Virgin. So if you want cheapest chips, you go to Ikea. If you want amazing products, you might go to an Apple type setup uh, and Virgin, it's customer service. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm talking too much. So all of those brands are delivering great value to their customers, but are not the cheapest in a lot of cases. So again, it comes back to what sets you apart. What's your unique point of difference in the market and how are you unique, better, different versus the other ones? And a lot of that comes down to emotion. So, um, you know, Apple are tapping into the kind of the status. You want to be seen with the latest and the greatest of technology, the latest iPhone with all these whiz bang um, tools, benefits and features that 99.9% .9 of the time you actually don't use, but that's okay. It's important to some people like you, Lucy, sucker for anything Apple. <laughs> um, or it might be Ikea. You just want good looking furniture or good looking accessories in your house that don't cost a fortune. Customer service is obviously really important to a lot of people who are flying because it's so stressful, provided they don't lose their bags. Yes, Erin, totally. You don't want to lose your bags. You don't want to leave on leave late, any of that sort of stuff. And I know like I'm not 
endorsing Virgin as being the best in customer service, but I just know it's one of their big promises or brand, yeah, brand promises. So how are you delivering value? It doesn't have to be you're the cheapest, you're the, um, you know, cheapest pair of earrings or the ch cheapest directory or whatever it might be. You might be providing great value in another way through exceptional content or customer service or collaborations or whatever it might be. So have a think about how you consistently make it about your customers and deliver them great value. So number one, being unique and different. Number two, I'm looking at my notes, was about being consistent. So being familiar. I can't say familiar, familiarity. I need to practice. <laughs> being familiar. Three was about um, starting to build some of those strong, distinctive brand assets. What's your Joyville or what's your red Coca-Cola? Um, number four was making it about your customers. It's not about telling me how amazing you are or all these fantastic things that you're doing because I'm so amazing. It's got to be about your customers. What are their pain points and how will you help solve them? How will you help them overcome that journey or how will you hold, them ha hold their hand throughout that process? And then number five is about delivering exceptionally good value, not necessarily cheapest chips value, if that's not your thing, not my thing in my biz, it might be a different type of value, whether that be cutting edge technology, customer service, great products, unique features and benefits, whatever it might be. Now, branding is a freaking massive topic that I could talk about for 27 million hours and I'm not going to, but I hope some of those thoughts just start to percolate in your head and you can start to have a think about where you sit on some of those things, um, what your distinctive assets might be, what some of those messages or those consistent messages are, or those consistent conversations that you can start having with your customers. Consistent conversations to start having with your customers, that's a big sentence so that you can ultimately set yourself apart from your customers, so that you can be unique, different, so that you can build that know, like, and trust model and accelerate people through so that there's lots of people who know you, there's a smaller group of people who like you and an even smaller group of people who trust you. So how do you grow the no bucket, increase the size of the like bucket and maximize the potential that you've got in the trust bucket? Does that make sense? Help, help, does it make sense? Um, and as I said, you're not gonna suddenly today go, oh, that's what branding's all about, cool, I'm gonna go and implement that tomorrow, tick, branding done. It does evolve and it does change and it does progress over time, but you just need to make a start with it and you just need to start to take some of those active steps to move forward in some of these areas. Um, people rebrand all the time because their business direction changes or they pivot on some of those stories so far that their branding doesn't align, so on and so forth. So. It's not an exact science. It's not a yes, no, black, white type scenario. You just have to start making some conscious choices or some conscious decisions and start to plot out some of that stuff and see what sort of response you get from your customers or your clients um, and ultimately start to meander down that branding path. I'm not a branding expert by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but I've worked in brand marketing for a hell of a long time on some of the biggest brands in the world. So I'm really happy to have a conversation with you about your brand or some of your assets or what your secret source is or whatever it might be. If you're feeling stuck or you don't have a point of difference or you don't know how to um, you know, differentiate yourself from your competitors or whatever it might be. There's lots of people out there selling exactly the same product who don't have a unique point of difference. Um, and I'm working with a few at the moment to really carve out, well, what's your story then? What, what are you doing to differentiate yourself? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to, what, what do you want to stand for? Or what some of those messages are that are going to set you apart from your competitors? Uh, so, ESSHQ this week. Whoo, it feels like, I should never say this out loud because then my diary just gets slammed and I realize it's not more relaxed at all. But I do have a quieter week this week, which is amazing. Um, I've got a few client calls today. I'm catching up with a girlfriend and I'm playing school mum today, which is good. Love a good Monday. Uh, and then tomorrow I'm starting with a new client tomorrow. I'm going out to see her beautiful studio space um, and kick off our biz planning together, which is super fun. Wednesday, I uh, am seeing pink on Wednesday night. I've been insanely jealous of all of the content that I've seen through Instagram so far. And Wednesday, it's my turn, which I'm super pumped about. Um, yeah, so I've got a really, really good week is what I'm trying to tell you. Not gloating or telling you I could talk to you about how amazing pink is for forever. I'm totally going to marry her and turn for her and 
we're going to have babies together and live happily ever after because, my God, actually, there's a really good chance that this time next week I would have cut my hair off and dyed it some crazy colour. Last time I went to the Pink concert, um, I just spent the whole time there going, oh, my God, I want short hair. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So don't be shocked if this time next week I have no hair. Like, totally putting it out there to the universe to decide for me. <laughs> Anyway, have a great week, guys. I'm here if there's anything I can do to help. If you need some help with your branding or any other parts of your biz, just shout. Um, absolutely here to help. So I hope you guys have a really, really good week. Um, yeah, don't, don't get too overwhelmed or too bogged down with, oh, I don't know my secret sauce and I don't have any distinctive brand assets. It's just something for you to consider and start to put on your... Um, radar, I guess, and what are some of those things that you can start to baby step forward that will ultimately start and hopefully in the long run set yourself set yourself or set your business apart from your competitors. I need a drink of water. I've been talking for too long. Have an awesome Monday, guys. Happy, happy Monday. I will chat to you soon.